And welcome back to Joe mm -hmm. Kelly Radio. We are here and about to introduce two standout artists. One lady has an amazing voice, amazing songwriter, singing all kinds of genres, funk, jazz, blues. And she recently released her solo debut CD, believe it or not. Um, it's been, been a while, but she's been performing all over the United States, Dallas, Texas, for so many years. And her husband, they work together on this record. He's a great friend of ours. We've had him at the WBOF studios. Kurt Jones, who was a member of Slave Aura and uh, his own solo work, Kurt Jones. So we're going to introduce right now, CC Jones and Kurt Jones. Welcome to Joe Kelly Radio. Hey, Joe. Hi. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I mean, it's it, the record came out. I think you officially released the record in October, right? Yeah, yes. that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, you you did not cheat the listener on <laughs> on the songs or the length of songs. I mean, some some people are just releasing EPs in 20, 30 minutes, but you you've got a like it used to be a full full packed uh, CD. Tell us about going into that and making it so filled up with great music. Well, uh, I kind of just follow a template that I kind of established in doing my own independent albums. And once, um, when I started my first solo album, uh, I didn't know who was going to be listening to it. I didn't know whether there was going to be a label or I didn't know anything. I just knew that I wanted to define myself as an artist. And then as time went on, it became clear that it didn't matter to me that it didn't fit protocol for current day radio because well, it didn't fit their format and they weren't going to play it anyway. So I said, well, I might as well please myself and do what I know that I'd like to do. And uh, I established the, the saying, my record, my rules. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of how that came to light and, and, did every record that way and and by the time i got done with that and my good friend monty moyer who was right. very instrumental in helping me with uh get get on board with uh, being independent uh, through like distributors like cd baby um it became clear to me i said you know it's it's not for people for radio that wants to limit the amount of time of songs and and we're not, I wasn't doing it on vinyl anymore, so I didn't have to worry about 20 minutes per side and what goes on with mastering when it comes to that, because you know it's gonna be digital and it's gonna be a CD and it's gonna be a digital download. So I said, this is for people who really appreciate the music and really, really love it, you know? And it's gonna be the way I intended it to be, which is the way it used to be. I mean, right, right. you used to buy a product from a songwriter and artist and you got what they envisioned and they're, they're the way they express themselves through it. And there's no time limit on it. I mean, from the days in the 70s and, you know, remember the, the, the funk albums, there yeah. are times where you might have had an album with six songs on it. But the songs were long, but <laughs> they yeah, especially took, those early slave records. Yeah, but they took you somewhere, you know. And it's like I said, I wanted to get back to that. Just doing music, each song has its own. It's once you start it, it kind of requires what it requires, and it starts telling you what it's supposed to be. And if you start fighting it, that's when you start. Uh preventing it from being what it can be and reaching its full potential. So once it gets going, I say, yeah, this feels good that way. And if it's six minutes, so be it. It's a six minute <laughs> right. ballad or whatever it is. If it's four minutes, five minutes, or if it's short, if it's only a short piece, that's what it is. And I just follow that template. And with CeCe's record, we did the exact same thing. And it yeah, was exciting. Record. It was exciting to to be able to uh, uh, do a project that way because it it definitely gave me you know a lot more freedom 
to be the artist that I wanted to be. And I've always wanted to be, uh, you know, having been on Virgin Records before and, you know, having the same experiences that that Kurt did in his previous, uh, uh, you know, label experiences, you know, they do limit you or they do try to uh, uh, develop the artist to be what they want them to be. And then it turns out to be um, something that maybe you're just doing just to do, and it's not really what your heart is really, you know, feeling. Uh, I've, I've been forced to sing songs I didn't like <laughs> in the past. And, uh, you know, uh, in, in this case, everything that we wrote together or that he put together started it, or I finished it, or we did it together. However we did it, we did it our way. And uh, I felt every one of those songs they were exciting it was a journey uh and uh and it's still a journey moving forward to see you know how we how we put it out there yeah cc jones and curtis jones here and uh the cd by the way <clears throat> excuse me is called levels of love you can go to ccjones.com c-e-c-i jones.com and available on probably all the, the major digital outlets as well right yes definitely Let's talk about you, CC. going back to singing. You, you grew up, how long were you in uh, New Mexico and then moving to Dallas Fort Worth? I was young. I was a little girl when we moved away from New Mexico. Uh, and, you know, a lot of that has to do with, you know, the, the folks, the parents are looking for jobs, you know, that right. are, you know, they had a bunch of kids and they needed to find a place to be able to afford to, you know, a, a large family. So my parents moved away from uh, the Southwest area to, you know, Texas to uh, dad started going to uh, tech schools and, you know, he went to TI, Texas Instruments. So he was uh, a machinist for the better part of his career. Uh, and, you know, while he was in New Mexico and, you know, uh, uh, you know, being the type of uh, uh, musician that, you know, on the side, you know, he had to try to figure out, well, do I do my music or do I do my music and, you know, try to support my family with a regular job. So, uh, but, you know, he, um, he brought us over here when we were very, very young. So uh, him showing me the, um, uh, you know, different styles of music that he was into, uh, you know, was a big impression on me. You know, he definitely impressed upon me quite a bit of uh, versatility in music and genres. What kind of what kind of records were you grooving to when you were in your younger years? Oh man, I started off. Dad was into jazz. Dad was into blues and uh, f you know some some forms of funk like uh, James Brown, Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, heavy into Motown, but, you know, when he was doing his own band thing, they did a combination of the, you know, Motown sound along with uh, Tejano music. And uh, so that's kind of what we grew up with and uh, Latin, Latin music of, of different uh, genres as well. So um, I had a, had a quite a big exposure to you know, a variety of music. And Kurt Jones, of course, we, we talked about this, I think, a little while back. Uh, Marvin Gaye, a huge influence in, in your music, right? Oh, yeah, Marvin. Well, it's it's a kind of a family link to it, too, because my mother's sisters used to sing with Motown when Motown was early, just getting started. And um, they knew Marvin Gaye. They knew the Spinners. The Spinners were first signed to Motown. And, uh, you know, so, and they stayed, my mother's sisters stayed Two of them stayed with us for a little while at my my house when I was growing up in Linden, New Jersey. And from time to time, they would rehearse in the basement, and I would sit right next to my aunt Penny. She had the guitar because she was the one that they all sang, and she sang. She played guitar, and that's what made me want to get a guitar for Christmas. But yeah, they knew Marvin Gaye, and it just and he was one of those artists that the, there's certain artists, all there's so many great influences, but there's certain artists that were really connected to making me want to do it. And Marvin, Marvin, Jimi Hendrix and Sly and Ray Charles were probably very instrumental in inspiring me, making me feel like I just had to try to do this, you know? So your first band was in New Jersey? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I grew up, and uh, we had, we 
you know, a bunch of bands playing in talent shows and then started going into nightclubs and all that. And once we started playing in clubs and getting to that place, my Aunt Penny from the Davenport Sisters came and started managing our band. And okay. when she managed our band, we she was getting us uh, engagements all over the state of New Jersey and on the East Coast. And somewhere along the line, she met Steve Washington. And Steve Washington's the founder of Slave and had him come down to, to our basement to talk with us. And that's how I met him. And, and he and I clicked kind of, and yeah, I mean, for a long time, it was them and, and, and it was our band. Slave was Slave and all, we had our band and Stevie was trying to get us a record deal. But at, as time went on, our band, we lost our bass player and we could never find a guy to replace him. And so we were working jobs and the band kind of just disbanded. And one day I spoke to Stevie and he told me to come up and he wanted to talk to me about something. And uh, we, he, we, he kind of included me in the mix and asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. And so that's how it got going. Funk history was made, Joe. Yeah, just this uh, unforgettable <laughs> band. We've had various members on the show. And when Mark passed away, Mark Adams, uh, we had Drac on, Victor Wooten. There was a lot of big turnout with, with that. So Wow. Yeah, just some, yeah. Some you know, great we're, history. We're actually, I think we're actually right on the anniversary of the day when Mark Adams passed. I oh, think this is. I'm gonna to try to dig up that special. Thing. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. I think it might be today, and if it is today, whatever day it is, I know he died on Steve Arrington's birthday, and that's right wow. in this week, the first week of March. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Steve. Steve's a great guy too. Great drummer. Yeah. And uh, our guest right now, CC Jones, Curtis Jones, husband and wife collaborating music and um, how long have you been married officially uh four years in june okay. we, we will celebrate our fifth year together uh married That's great yeah mm -hmm. so really four and a half more than more than four and a half years right. we're coming up on five really soon right so i i know curtis made the uh the transport from new jersey out to texas and uh you know to make that decision to move it's got to be love, right? <laughs> he followed the the the, yeah. the the love stars, you know, my yeah. way in Texas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was a major decision, uh, you know, because yeah. it's the kind of decision that is so major that you don't even realize how major it is while you're doing it <laughs> until you start right. living it. But <laughs> He reminds well, me quite often, Joe, he's like... Yeah. I'm in freaking Texas. <laughs> right, right. Because I'll, I'll tell you, I laugh because my wife uprooted and moved down here like 19 years ago from Montreal. Oh, so wow. I, I get reminded of that every so often. It's like, it's not you who had to make all the life changes. It's me. <laughs> so, yeah. And I don't get to see my family that often. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a big sacrifice in that kind of way. Right. Um you know, I, I had to weigh it out with a lot of things. I said, well, taking the situation, the relationship seriously, and I said, well, if we ever get to a place where we want to purchase a home or and really, you know, just have our own dwellings, I, I knew that from where I'm at in New Jersey, that's the last place in the world that we want to do it at because of they have the highest property tax in the whole country and have had it for a long time. Right. So, yeah. so that if anybody's going to do the moving, I'm probably going to have to do the moving because you get a lot more, more, more for your money down here. Joe, I was perfectly willing to move. I was, yeah. I was ready oh, to okay. make the move, but he, he convinced me that <laughs> it was yeah. less expensive for him to come my way because it's right, nowhere, right. nowhere near as expensive here as it is there now, you know, given all this COVID mess and uh, yeah, the, nobody saw that. Coming. Nobody saw that coming. So all the transplants from Cal from the West, from California, coming over here and buying up all the houses. So it's making life difficult try trying to buy a house in our, our own area, in our own backyard. 
So uh, yeah. So so speaking of, um, let's go back to March of last year when COVID really was taken seriously here in the country mm-hmm. or in some in some places. But um, musically, you know, your area did it shut down abruptly? The live the live venues. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, okay. flat shut down. So we right. we've been. Uh, if anything, for us, we stayed focused because we were nearly. Matter of fact. We were 95% finished with the album. So we kind of looked at each other, scratching our heads, like, what are we waiting on? Let's just go ahead and put it out. You know, we had two or three more songs we wanted to go in the studio with, but we talked ourselves out of it because we already had more than enough and we still had to cut one song out of the list. And, uh, and you see, we have 15 songs. So, uh, yeah, we had more than enough to go ahead and put it out. And, um, you know, we stayed that was our project for the year, uh, getting it out and um, finalizing it, mastering it, well, mixing it, mastering it, doing the photo shoot, doing, you know, all that we did very carefully during this COVID mess and uh, and but, got it out by October. But actually, the mixing, we really had most of the mixing done yeah. two years before COVID. I had my okay. partner, my engineer from New Jersey, uh, Kendall Stubbs, who worked with Cool and the Gang and Eric Clapton and Tom Tom Club, so many people. He's just my guy. And he and I had an independent production company together for a while. Yeah. And we produced the Baja Men together. And okay. we've done a bunch of stuff. And when I got down here, the way I was doing this particular record was different than the way I do my own. <clears throat> my own records, I did myself, I, I recorded myself and I mixed myself and I used my guy for mastering to master it. But this particular record, I recorded all the tracks at home in New Jersey, came okay. down with the music and then loaded the music into computers down here in the studio with a, a friend of CeCe's that is a really great drummer who has studio here and we recorded the vocals and any other over overdubs through his studio. So once I did that, <clears throat> I just sent, instead of trying to, I wanted to be there to mix it with my partner, but work schedules didn't permit that. So I sent the files to him and I said, you know what to do, bro, go for it, do what we do. And he, he mixed it and would send me a, t- a test mix of everything that he did, email, and I'd listen to it. If there's anything I wanted to adjust, I'd call him, tell him, yeah, do this, do that. And he'd do that, make the adjustments. And that's how we got the record mix. And we did most of that in 2018. Oh, okay. So the record was pretty much, most of the record was done and mixed. Mm-hmm. And we just had a few things left to do that we wanted to get to. But it became obvious that if we're going to do this, we need to get it done. And as weird as this sounds, COVID-19 kind of gave us the opportunity to stop the, you know, the rigorous schedule of work that was holding us back from getting it back into the studio on top of filing for unemployment. (laughs) And the way they were paying unemployment and extra money. Hey, and co- I've been in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, we, we had to take all, advantage of that. I was getting all yeah. this extra money. I said, you know, we need to get this record done. Let's you know? do it. So, <laughs> we suddenly had a, a budget to finish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So we did. Yeah, it. I, I, I left the place after 29 years at, at Fairfield because, you know, we got a couple of people in the house with health problems and it's, uh, you know, yeah, life life changed big time for a lot of people, right? Oh, yeah. Sure did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how about now? Um, you, Texas is big time in the news for various reasons. You know, <laughs> Texas is big. You got some big personalities, and mm-hmm. um, you. How were you during the um, the winter storm that knocked things silly out there? We were blessed. Uh, we didn't lose any power. Where we're staying, we didn't miss we didn't a beat. Lose, really. We didn't miss anything. Oh, okay. Now, yep. uh, Cece's daughter and husband and three children live in Richardson, which is a ways okay. out from here. And they lost power and they came and stayed with us for a couple of days. But, oh, okay. um, you know, we were blessed to be able to 
be able to host them and give them a place to be. And, you know, when, when they got their power back on and they were going back home, I told them, I said, look, this, I don't know what's going to happen with this. Nobody knows how bad this is, but if you get home and it goes out again, just turn right back around and come back here. Cause you know? they're all small toddlers under four. Right. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah from yeah. four down to, you know, uh, infancy. So, uh, I couldn't see, I, I basically, uh, stressed do not, try to stay there make make sure you had you know come on back and uh but there was eight of us in a two-bedroom oh, yeah. <laughs> in a two-bedroom <laughs> apartment right and, right uh, so it was it was a tight squeeze but it was you know it was better than many people yeah, experienced yeah. out there so well, yeah we were really blessed the way it but, went down yeah. the way it went down for us it like you said it was it was tight but Situations present themselves in a strange way I've learned in life over the years. And years from now, when we look back at that, that you're going to look at that as one of your fondest memories of when those little grandchildren are in this old apartment for a couple of days and bumping around and all the, you know, little things you see them doing and all that. (laughs) And as they grow up, you're going to think back to that and you're going to, it's going to be a memory that's just going to be priceless because I have those kind of memories with my son when he was little. And right. so things happen for a reason. And it's so weird. You can't understand it in the time that it happens, but sometimes time gives you a deeper sense of appreciation for what happens. Oh yeah. CC Jones and Curtis Jones, Kurt Jones with us on Joe Kelly radio. The CD Levels of Love, C.C. Jones, her debut solo CD, um, just out with uh, in October. Um, they're getting ready. They've been promoting a lot of great reception out in the U.K., right? I noticed in Europe, yeah. a lot of, a lot yeah, of, a lot of uh, great applause from them. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the U.K. really jumped on it and got on board. Um the U.K. has always been a good following, has, has been a good market for for the stuff that I've done with Aura and Slave and especially with Aura and Deja, we've gone over to the UK and done shows over there and did interviews. We did TV shows, Top of the Pops and all of that stuff. So the Brits and I have had a long love affair musically. (laughs) And so I don't know, it almost seems like that translated in when this record came out. So, because they jumped on it immediately, and well, they, especially after they saw Kurt Jones' name on it as a producer, they're like, "Wow, we need to check this out." And that's that's been the gist of a lot of my interviews, uh, their curiosity and into, "Wow, Kurt Jones," you know. And I remember, you know, being a, an Aura fan, and you know, they they give us their 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 heart and soul about you know their experiences, and then they're thoroughly impressed with the product that we came out with and the production that that uh, we came out with uh, for for the Levels of Love project. So uh, I'm I'm uh, pleased and honored to be able to have in, been in a position to to kind of grab onto Kurt's Kurt's uh, coattails and and ride that you know. Um, Bobby, you're you're a strong strong artist in your own right. So well, thank Absolutely. you. Helping each other out. Helping each other out. I believe that. I absolutely. Believe that. that was my mission because uh, she was affiliated with Virgin in a, in a certain kind of way back in the day when I was with Virgin. And we didn't get to really connect, but we knew of each other. And later on, as we met, once we started talking. Good I, old Facebook. Yeah, the idea. <laughs> That's that, how we yeah, met, right. actually, officially. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. the social media, it, it, right. the idea of a record started coming to pass. And uh, and I. Well, the relationship first, then the idea of a record. I don't know. I mean, we were, <laughs> first it was the music. Well, because true. that was the first thing that made me listen to her. But you know, you liked me first. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go there, Joe. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it had, to, but it was music. I had to hear the voice first. I wish you could see his face. Listen, I've, I've been around, been around a lot of pretty faces, and the, and the voice, maybe it claimed it to be, it. claimed to be this great singer, and I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so who traveled with? It was different. I heard. Thank her God voice. I cut the mustard now. I heard her voice. <laughs> as, when I heard her, yeah, when I, I heard made her, it, I cut it. I heard her voice I and it said, I, "I already know what to do with that <laughs> because I've worked." So who traveled people. where? Who, who who made the first move? Getting on the road. I came down to Texas. Oh, okay. We we, yeah. we kind of just we were talking by phone and the whole thing and thinking about music and talking about this and uh, she had, I was sharing some of the stuff that I've done with my solo records and she liked that and was inspired by that enough to know that I said, well, you know, you know, if you want to do an R and B record, I can do an R and B record and keep you from having to spend the kind of money that some of these other people would have you spend. So we, we, but there was a personal relationship kind of developing at the same time. So the first meeting was, uh, it was in the time like in May and the basketball playoffs were the finals and the playoffs were, and I was really into the San Antonio Spurs at the time in 2013. Okay. And they could, because they played such great team basketball and I love it. Right. San Antonio, I told the San Antonio was one of my favorite cities because we toured through there and played in and the river walk and I loved it. And so we, one of the first face-to-face -face meetings we had, she said, well, why don't you come down to Texas and we'll go down to San Antonio and hang out. And I said, and, and this is what, mind you, this is a new person I'm just starting to talk with and we're <laughs> feeling each other out. Right. And I, I remember hanging up the phone and said, okay, I guess I'm going to Texas, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we go down to Texas and we go down to San Antonio and we hang out. And it well, was he flies, really that, I, he flies down to here to Dallas first and we mm -hmm. drove to San Antonio together so that we could have that, you know, one-on-one right. -on -one right. road, road time, you road know? Road trip, Road yeah. trip, you know? That, that to me was going to be how this you know, how you get a chance to talk to somebody, you know, yeah, right. Met. And with doing that and us talking about the music, I had messed around with a couple of ideas and there's one particular idea I had. So I brought it with me and on that drive. You know, I just popped the CD in the, in the, in the car. And I said, what do you think it is? And she, she loved it. She thought it was something I was doing for myself. And uh, she said, uh, wow, that's really nice. I said, yeah, I was kind of thinking about maybe that would be something for you. And uh, that was uh, the song that's on the album called You Take Me There. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You Take Me There was written the same trip that, you know, when as soon as he showed it to me, we both, uh, once we landed in, <laughs> we parked ourselves in, in San Antonio, we started kind of you know working on it, working writing, on it writing it we yeah. created the song in on that you know on that particular uh excursion basically so you right, you right. take me there was born from that uh that gathering mm -hmm. well levels of love you can get at uh ccjones.com c e c i jones.com all the uh online digital formats amazon and itunes right Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Now, now the songs a lot, a lot of great lyrics in there, taking people different turns of romance and ups and downs and stuff like that. How do you stagger a record song wise with lyrics? And was did that play a big part? The feel because you got a lot of tracks in there, a lot of emotions going on. Well, remember the the concept uh, is levels of love, and we okay. we basically. You know, there's there's so many different experiences that that uh, one goes through in in a relationship, and you know, in in our uh, you know presentation of this, we showed you know everyone about fifteen ideas of what one would go through in a relationship. Now, some of those some of those experiences were actually actually real life experiences for for Kurt and I maybe the getting together getting to know you falling in love that kind of thing but some of those other ideas were of you know Kurt's real creative when he when he, he can come up with a storyline and tell a story based on you know just a random you know uh, 
thought of, of what someone might have experienced or, or he'll just kind of craft it up. And so some of that was, you know, kind of. Well, yeah, to add to that, you know, the beginning started with things that felt like they were happening between the two of us. Mm -hmm. So that right. was the foundation of, of what real art should be, which it should be truthful mm -hmm. and honest. And so it was being honest about what was being, what was happening as that developed and more songs came about. It l lended itself to where we could see where it, it can give you a clue of where this was going and what it was talking about. So in doing that, it led to things, more things that were happening between us, but then some things that may not have been happening between us, but happening with people in a love relationship, mm -hmm. things that people can relate to and everyone has gone through and understands. But with all of that, as that kept coming and mounting one on top of the other, which is what led us to find the title Levels of Love. Because after a while, it just got to a place where, you know, this we're talking about a lot of stuff here, what we're going through, what people may go through, and and what people understand. And, and it it's it's like levels of it, like starting from level one to, you know, whatever level you go to. And that kind of led to the title of, mm -hmm. of Levels of Love. It yeah. made perfect sense. It made sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so many great tracks on there and some great ballads. And one of my favorite tracks is not a ballad, uh, Only No One Way to Love, but you put <laughs> on the rock, breaking out that. Yeah. Uh -huh. I love uh -huh. that track. Yeah. That's uh -huh. cool. That's yeah. a personal situation, kind of, kind of something that came, you know, like when I work with artists, you know, I, I feel them out and talk with people. And that, some of that stuff just came out of some of Cece's past and things that she experienced. And, you know, and then I listened to her talk about it and you know, I don't when she was talking about it and explaining it to me, because you gotta remember, as as we going on, as we're going on with this record, our relationship is also being is developing. So right. as she's telling me about personal things in her past, me being in the mindset of being a songwriter and all that, I'm like, <laughs> well, okay. That sounds like a song. You, you, you're telling me. <laughs> You're venting and telling me this, but <laughs> I'm thinking about, okay, that's got to be something that we're going to sing about, you know? So you went into a private room and wrote down all the, your notes, right? We kind of got, yeah, we, I mean, we, and then once we got there together, you know, we started working together. I said, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's where we need to go with this, you know? And so we, it was real easy once I laid the, the the format down kind of the template the, the idea of what it was going to be about and you know and she already had the information that was very accurate and honest <laughs> so all we had to do is put it in song form right, so right it didn't make writing that song very hard at all matter of fact it make it, it made it easy because it was coming from her heart and that's truthful so i mean what that's what real art, if you go back in history and talk about, and find great artists, painters, whatever it is, true art has to be honest. That's one thing that I've learned from years and years of studying art and sound and everything. And true art has to be honest. And that, that was truly honest when it came from her. So. I was telling all my business, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's on permanent record now, right? On there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, right. Cece, growing, growing up in Dallas-Fort Worth um, pretty much all your life, t tell us about the, the local music scene, the live scene, and uh, you've done a bunch of different kinds of, of uh, shows and, you know, blues and jazz and funk. What was wow. it like getting into the scene and what's it like now? Well, in my beginnings, um, 
of course, uh, you know, my aspirations were, you know, since I was 10, you know, again, that my, my influence was my father who, you know, taught me everything that, you know, uh, um, you know, I could possibly do, you know, uh, vocally. And I think he was, he was impressed with my style uh, at okay. such a young age. I had a mature sound uh, singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star on a, you know, uh, elementary <laughs> pageant, Christmas pageant, you know, that kind of thing. And so, but my, my, uh, my style was, was impressive to him. So he kind of nurtured that and taught me more songs. I was really into Carol King growing up. And uh, so like that Tapestry album, if you remember that one. I, I yeah, think yeah, I knew, I have a, we have a copy of that. Oh man, I, I think I knew that by heart from front to back. And, and so my version of You Got a Friend, my dad and I would sing an acoustic vocal piece and, you know, and that kind of, you know, we, we would entertain friends and family and, and dad got me basically, you know, he wanted to show me off in front of his friends and he would have these little house parties and, you know, try to convince me to sing. And then I was kind of shy because it's cool when I was singing with dad, but then he wanted to show me off in the parties and, and you know, I, I just wasn't into it at such a young age. And so had my first paid gig, <laughs> he dangled a dollar in front of me saying, hey, I'll give you this dollar <laughs> if you sing the song I taught you. And boom, I took that dollar and I sang the song and, you know, it kind of grew from there. So uh, my style of music from that that age on up, um, I I was into Earth, Wind, and Fire. I was in, in I was into Denise Williams, uh, Stephanie Mills. I mean, all the all the great um, you know seventies uh, and eighties artists. And and you know I was I was young, so but I was I was very soulful. Uh, loved Aretha Franklin. Uh, I mean, I, I could name a, a ton of vocalists that uh, that I I'm influenced by. But as my life grew on, uh, I um, I started um, singing in the in, in choirs in school and, and it just kind of my voice progressed and I started singing in bands later in high school after that I mean didn't even go to my own prom or uh, when, right after graduation I went to a gig so you know I was heavy into it and so one thing led to another and I started doing Battle of the Bands kind of like what Kurt did uh, in his start, uh, his beginnings and one band uh, after another I finally got exposed to uh, what I really wanted to do which was R&B and um, you know one one thing led to another and um, I was introduced to, um, uh, I think everyone remembers uh, um, my particular, uh, I was in, I was an in independent label at the time, but uh, everybody remembers the management team that I had because Vanilla Ice was really popular at that time. And so I had the same management team that he did. Oh, okay. And so that kind of opened up some, some opportunities. And so some of the mutual friends that Kurt and I knew and, and related to, I met and um, I, I, you know, was offered a, 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 a deal with Virgin Records. So that kind of opened up. They wanted to groom me into a dance artist mode, kind of like what Paul Abdul uh, turned out to be. I was being groomed for that. And then um, it just kind of, you know, went into a shelving mode because uh, people were starting to argue and fuss about who's going to make more points than the other. And uh, so my project was held for that. So that kind of let, uh, let me down for a minute. And I didn't know the business well enough to know that, you know, when you get shelved, that doesn't mean that your career is over with. It just right. means come back, you know, and they really wanted me back, but I didn't realize and I didn't have any real good representation at the time. So uh, kind of let that uh you know, stand a little too long and, and did, did my own thing. So a lot of the um, musical endeavors here was, you know, session work. I stayed very busy doing, uh, uh, you know, some uh, vocals, uh, lead background, uh, did commercials and, you know, some radio spots and such. So I, I stayed pretty busy, busy doing, you know, uh, a lot of that type of recording, uh, recording artist. Um, and then, you know, here we go. We met uh, Kurt eventually after, after uh, you know, he hears some of the music that I was trying to do, and um, it kind of grew from there. So, you know, I'm... Uh, got Levels of Love from C.C. Jones and Kurt Jones, ccjones.com. And um, you also, the two of you, get involved playing blues once in a while, right? I saw that 
star clip your planet is it Antones, right? Um, let's see the the one that I think you saw was probably either Tolbert's, a place called Tolbert's, or uh, um, Antones, right? I'm not sure if that's the name. Oh, of the okay. Place. Maybe I, maybe I was reading the uh, the logo wrong on the, on the backdrop, but you were definitely singing blues. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking he's looking at the. There's several blues um, yeah, videos out there. there could be, yeah, could be there's the uh, Poor David's Pub. That's probably the biggest. One. Am I singing? Am I the one singing on that? Yeah, part? you're singing. Yeah, Kurt's on playing guitar. Got okay. a bassist and a, and a drummer too. That's got to be Evil Gal. So I'm thinking. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Women, women of blues. Women of blues project. <clears throat> I don't blue. know. But, yeah, but, uh, but we did. Yeah, we you get into it. Yeah, you guys are uh, work on blues music as well, right? Yes. Yeah, we did. As a matter of fact, I mean, we like to get out and stretch out and play locally when we, you know, when we primarily we like I would like before COVID hit, we we're on track to right. you know, start touring and uh, doing some of the stuff that we do. But when we're here locally, there's a lot of spots, and down here in Texas, there's a deep affection for blues and mm -hmm. so many blues artists and guitarists. I mean, well, the the legacy of guitarists down here in Texas goes on forever. So right, right. I don't have to tell you about that. But uh, we, we get in the mix with blues situations and, and get to play and we combine what we do with soul with blues and do more of a bluesy kind of gig. Those turn out to be the most fun gigs ever. You know, you get to play <laughs> stuff like that that you always love and you know, and people really appreciate it, you know, and this is, this is a culture down here that really loves, has an affection for that. So, yeah, we, we, we go out and do it any chance we can can get. And we've also, uh, you know, kicked around uh, an idea or two about, you know, since we do enjoy uh, blues and kind of more of a funk blues sound right. for us. And uh, the idea and concept is, you know, to try to do something either together or uh, like a, um, a duo project in the blues scene, funky blues, yeah. something something like we that. We actually have the foundation. No limitations we, to what we yeah. like to do. We actually yeah. started be while, be while we were doing CeCe's record. We actually started and we have the blueprint of some songs for that's going to be a, a kind of bluesier project that we're going to release in time you know it's, it's in the formative stages right now but that's all we 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 have not lost sight of that either so that's in the mix along with our solo records which are what they are you know right, right. we still just want to stretch and do what we love to do musically and blues is blues is the foundation of everything man and so i mean if you can visit that in a way in any kind of way, mm -hmm. it just you know it's another way of expression and gives you an opportunity to do something that maybe people didn't expect to hear from you. Also, Joe, I don't know if anybody um, um, has you know dug this information up on us, but prior to COVID, we had already put the word out and started the promotions and marketing for um, what Kurt decided to you know, we were doing uh, uh, tours or setting up tours to be able to do the Kurt Jones and Aura show. And so well, we were- I did see that, yeah, right, so we, talk about it. Yeah, we started doing that and, and uh, you know, we started getting, uh, making tracks and, you know, headway on that and uh, uh, booking and, you know, next thing you know, COVID hit and we, all of those had to cancel. So, um, you know, Pretty much everyone is in the same boat that we are, that all those major shows we had, you know, scheduled uh, got um, got canceled. So, but that have, is have you seen uh, have you seen Glimmer of Hope of when some of these concerts venues are going to open up again? I know the summer is good for outdoors, but have you seen some hope for things? Well, we've actually been uh, contacted by, you know, one one of uh, the the uh, shows that we were going to do that had canceled. Uh, so they inquired about us, you know, are we interested in getting back out there in the summer? And, you know, we kind of responded, but we haven't heard much. So I'm, I'm not sure that COVID, uh, you know, the, the, the guidelines have really, truly opened up for that. But at least, you know, there, there's some discussion on it. So we're kind of. 
you know, with COVID, we're kind of at the mercy of a play-by-play kind of thing. We're we're right. playing it by ear as we go, because you know, one week it looks like mm-hmm. maybe things might be dying down, and you know, we're heading into the warmer weather, and and there's vac- vaccines available. <laughs> Maybe things are starting to get better, but then the next week you, t- you hear two or three governors decide that they're just tired of everything. They open up the whole state. And so now you well, I know, wonder where I wonder where, <laughs> you know, and, I, and I'm like, to me, you're just going to lose all the progress that you made exactly. with this because it's not going to help anything along with this virus that they don't understand mutates. So there's new variants that they're already found that are far more resistant to the vaccines that they have. So it's like so being, you're not yeah. really making any progress. And you're going so to see in Texas and, and you know, you're, you're saying the way it is and the governor opens up everything, rip off the mask and everything. But how about the people who live in Texas that you, you, you're around? Do they kind of <laughs> side with that or they're just like, this guy's crazy? It's, well, you it's know, like the country. They're split <clears throat> down the middle. Everybody, have, you see yeah. a good number of them without masks. You see a bunch of us who are pro mask, and right. you know. I'm, I mean, most of the people that most of the people that I've seen, and everyone going into stores and everything, in the stores and establishments are still maintaining wearing masks and doing what's safe. I saw one guy in in the store just walking through. A grocery store yesterday with no mask on, just you know, bold like, like bold and just <laughs> you know, I guess he just felt like he was just gonna go for it, you know. And I, right, right. And I said, well, that's where the beginning of all this is gonna start st- start taking steps backwards because you're gonna yeah, exactly. it's, you're gonna see enough of those, of those enough of those where it's not going to take long for them to come in contact with one of these variants. And oh my and, God, uh, and it's uh, spring spread. break is around the corner. Right. It's so gonna they, oh, yeah. we're going to yeah, see something happen here in a minute. Yeah. I, I guess you give it a couple weeks, right? And then you start uh, seeing numbers change, right? Yeah. I'm not looking so forward to it. That's why we were kind of yeah. playing it by ear as far as the live yeah. engagements are concerned. And you know, we, everybody, everybody in the whole world, is on a wait and see yeah. situation, you know, there, that's where we're at with this. You know, you don't know, no one has the answers, you know, yeah. all you can try to do is what, what feels safe. And if you're the kind of person that wants to, to be safe and be on the side of caution, then you'll do that. If you're on the side of that's impatient and feels like, you know, you're just tired of this and you don't, you don't, you doubt or mitigate the validity of this. You're going to get a different result and we're going to see it. Unfortunately, the decision to not take this serious affects people that do want to take it serious. And that's right, what's right. sad. Yeah, split, split right down the middle, families and everything. Oh, yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we play, we, we play it safe here. We haven't been out too much at all. So right. we don't know. really do anything and, either. Just, you know, yeah. we're, Kurt's Kurt's constantly working on music. So that's, you know, as long as he's still doing music, that means once he's finished writing the, <laughs> the, the base, you know, the foundation and he brings me in, then my, my job begins, you know, so we're, we're, we're going to stay prolific uh, you right. know, and safe while doing it. Uh, I've been invited to do vocal sessions and recording sessions here recently. And, you know, um, I'll probably uh, honor them as well as I hope they'll honor me and wear their masks until I'm ready to get in there and, and record. So I'm not going right. to stop the wheel completely, but as any opportunities that that uh, um, arise that allow me to also remain safe, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take advantage of them until we all feel safe enough to get out there and do some shows, but I miss it. I really miss live shows. Uh, and fortunately, uh, I mean, I, I have fortunately and unfortunately, let's put it that way. I've always been, uh, you know, I've always had a job, so I've not had the entire, you know, world come down on me when, when COVID hit, I still had a job, thank God. And Can I you work at home. Can you work at home? I work at a, a <clears throat> excuse me. I work at a hospital, but for oh, the so you have to be there. 
Right. For the first two months of COVID, I did work from home. So oh, and, okay. and I still have that flexibility at this point. Um, okay. So I I'm I'm blessed with that type of gig at this point. So uh, but, you know, for those who who were straight musicians and that's all they did, period. Um, they, I'm sure that they're suffering, you know, trying to make ends meet. So I see a lot of them doing their streaming and, you know, doing tips online and so forth, trying to, you know, just make make money and and um i i support that you know and we need to keep you both healthy to get back on the road in your different configurations we're ready man it's true yeah we're interested very true hey how about our mutual friend monty moyer um actually monty the, one of the last concerts we went to is one of he, he was he was still with the time performing here in new haven connecticut um how, how's monty been doing um, he's been doing pretty good. Um, he's been working I've with spoke, uh, Jelly Bean, right? Spoke with him a couple times. Yeah, they did Jelly Bean's project. Yeah, and I spoke with him. And I asked him, well, because uh, at the end of uh, last year, was he kind of kind of served notice and just said, you know, that was going to be it for him. He was probably, you know, going to be done with going on the road with the time, you know. Right. And so, um, I spoke to him. In, the, in this last year, and I'm like, well, hey man, how how's it feel? Uh, how have you been doing? You you've been on doing that for so long, and how's it? And he's he's embraced it totally. He loves it. He's getting to do what he wants to do. Getting to do home projects around his house <laughs> right. and stuff like you know. It's a, so he's a he's, domestic guy now. <laughs> it seems like he's yeah. appreciating it all, you know. And you know, he's, you know, I did see him. I don't know if you saw uh, St. Paul Peterson has that. Funk on Fridays. Yes, uh -huh. I saw that. Yeah, you saw Monty, right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So All he's of a sudden, doing his like, little side stuff too. I've seen him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that was, that was cool to see him. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he, he was doing. He was, he was working on a blues project too. Yeah, he is. He's did that, and uh, he's got a another solo record that he's been working on for quite a while, and I'm hopeful that it get that you know to its fruition and. Uh, yeah, he's, he's going to find ways to stay busy doing what he does. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's one of those kind of guys. Once a member of the time, always a member. Yeah. Never okay. say never, right? You can't That's just right. say I'm never coming back. Even oh, Jesse yeah. Johnson. Oh, yeah. yeah. Seen his name around as well. Yep. They're yeah, all... yeah. So, yeah, some really nice people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, hey, listen, I got to thank you so much for, for spending so much time. And we love the record. We got so many songs to, to go through it. So, it's a record that just doesn't get pushed aside after a few months. Levels mm -hmm. of love. So thank you for CC that. CC Jones, Kurt Jones, and uh, you know you have to come on when when a uh, few months when you're possibly getting back to do some gigs and everything. Definitely, that would be Definitely. that would be great. Keep yeah. an eye out. I'll I'll have a few videos coming out from from this project. I just I wanted to kind of see what uh you know how far what what songs are being actually played by everybody's personal interest but i'll have some videos coming out of my picks and and uh put oh, them out okay, there so well. so i'll uh i'll, I'll let yeah, you know, let when I know. Put them out there. We'll, we'll, we'll share them and everything how about awesome. I, have you been out to jersey we <laughs> we usually go every year uh this uh -huh. last year we didn't go because of covid right, yeah right. so we're contemplating at this my, point still. My family, we we're yeah. still kind of waiting for the right time to do it because I, you know, I want to be safe about it, and you know, I don't want his mom's ninety four, going um, to be ninety five this year. And, yeah, oh, wow. I don't want. Uh, how's she doing? She's doing great, really great. But we God want her to her. stay great, so we yeah. don't want to bring anything with us that right. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that, that's that's the main reason we're trying to take care of her and make sure she stays well. So yeah. We'll uh, make our decision based on how safe it is for everyone. Mm -hmm. but, um, right. I'm so excited how about your, you invited us. Yeah, thanks. How, how about Kurt, your son? How's he doing? He's doing wonderfully. He's doing doing really great. He's uh, releasing. He has released a single It's come, that's out, and his album is about to be released. He did a, sh a, sh a video which became like a short film, like a short documentary film called Don't Go Telling Your Mama. Okay. And he, the, by chance, with them getting ready to hype the album with this film, he and his manager and his people he worked with, they submitted it to Sundance Film Festival and they got accepted. 
not wow. only not yeah. only did it get accepted, it won for best nonfiction short film. So, wow. that's so now cool. he's not yeah, only that's impressive. Not only a rapper, songwriter, producer, he's now director, director. film director now. Go as ahead, well. Topaz. So, <laughs> And so, so Paz Jones. Yeah, yeah and that's proud, and that's before proud. the album even got the album's not even released yet. It's about to be released, singles released, but the movie was accepted at Sundance and they did the Sundance last month and they they, they had the whole thing and he his acceptance speech is on, was on uh was a Zoom acceptance speech, but he and the, his partners that worked on the on the movie with him and uh it was just amazing to see. He's he's really uh, digging in and, you know, just going for everything they can go for. He was beaming with pride, Joe. He was. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Smiling you know, from ear to ear. Yeah, that's one of my uh, biggest mistakes. I only went to one semester at NYU my freshman year, and I had a oh, wow. girlfriend back in Connecticut at the time, and I obviously that relationship didn't pan out, but, uh, you know, I should, you know, Rick Rubin, the guy who started Def Jam Records. Oh yeah, he was he was living in my dorm at the time, just starting the label and everything. I I mean I didn't know him then; I just read about it. Mm -hmm. We were living in Wine, Weinstein Hall, so uh, wow. yeah, great mm -hmm. school out there in NYU. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, very cool. So yeah. hey, we're gonna get into more music from CC Jones and Kurt Jones right here. And thanks, CC and uh, Kurt. <laughs> 